Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Vemico Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this Raspberry Pi 5 has 8GB of RAM, it comes with a 64GB microSD card, has a case, cooler, two HDMI cables, power supply, and probably some other things. So let's get this open. So here we have a user manual. So here we have the specs. You can pause and read through those. And we have physical specifications. And then we have instructions here on how to set up your Raspberry Pi. So I will walk through this to some extent. You may still want to read the manual on your own. But it looks like a very robust set of instructions and lots of pictures. So here we have the warranty card from Vemico. Let's get the parts out first. So here we have two HDMI cables. So these have the micro HDMI on one end and full size HDMI on the other. So you could use these cables to hook it up to pretty much any monitor or TV. Here we have a power supply. So this has a number of different outputs on it. The one we're interested in here would be the 5.1 volts at five amps. And that is USB-C out. Let me get a quick measurement on it. So it's right around four feet. We have a SanDisk micro SD card with the SD card adapter. So this is a SanDisk Ultra 64 gig card. Here we have a USB card reader. So you plug the micro SD card in here and you can plug this into a computer. We have a small Phillips screwdriver. Here we have the cooler and I'll leave that in the bag. We'll check that out in just a minute. We have a case and the Raspberry Pi. So let's get the case out. So this case has vents on the bottom. It has some slots for hanging this or mounting it. The whole top is a vent and then we have port openings on the side. And here we have some little feet and some little screws. So let's open this up. And here we have our Raspberry Pi 5. Open this up here. There we go. So it comes with its own manual and has a little quick start guide here telling us to hold it by the edges. So we have two micro HDMI ports. We have USB Type-C power, GPIO. We have USB 3 and USB 2 ports, gigabit ethernet, micro SD card slot. It also has headers for PoE, UART, and I think that's for battery, fan, so let's get the cooler out. So this has an aluminum heat sink. We have a fan with the correct plug on it. And here we have some thermal pads. And we have some little plugs here to hold it on. Let's see where to apply the thermal compound. I'm guessing it will be like so. And this will sit on top of it like that. So I'll peel the back off of these and get them installed. Okay. So these are not super sticky because this plate will really do most of the holding. So now we have the heat sink. I'm going to put these little clips in. Now I can place this on here and it's going to line up with this hole here and this hole here. So there's two holes, that's the upper one there. So I'll line it up and I'll press these through. Next, I want to plug in the fan. So this is going to be keyed to go in just one orientation. So if it doesn't fit in, flip it 180 degrees and it should fit in. Now let's put it in the case. So the bottom pulls off the case and this will drop right in like so. And you want this to line up with the four standoffs and then we have the screws to screw it in. So I like to hold the screw on the end of the screwdriver like so. This is at a weird angle, it might be hard to show on camera, but I'm going to screw all these in. I ended up using a pair of tweezers to help me guide those screws in. So now I can place the top back on. That will just clip in. I'm going to put the feet on here. Now we can get this connected up. So you'll need your own keyboard, mouse, and monitor. So I have a wireless keyboard and mouse here with a USB dongle. I'll plug that in to the USB 2.0, like so. I'll plug power in and I'll connect up a monitor. And I will just start with one monitor. So there's caps on the HDMI cable and the HDMI cable is five feet. So I'll plug this into HDMI. I'm going to connect that to my monitor. I have an extension on here so I don't have to get to the back of the monitor. But typically we would plug that right into the back. And we should be able to boot this up when I plug into power. So let me position here with my screen and plug it in.
Okay, so it said failed to boot, which is correct. I don't have a SD card in here, so I'll turn that off. So we need to prep the micro SD card. Let's head over to my computer to do that. So you'll need to download the Raspberry Pi OS Imager software. So if you go to the Raspberry Pi website and go to software, we'll scroll down a little bit. And here it says install the Raspberry Pi OS using the Raspberry Pi Imager, and we can download for our system. So you can download this for Mac, Windows, or Ubuntu. I've already installed this, so I'll open it up. So I'm going to insert the micro SD card into my computer. So first it says choose device. So I'll click that and I'll say I have a Raspberry Pi 5. It says choose OS. So I'm going to go with Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version. And then it says choose storage. And I'll choose the micro SD card. I'll hit next. It says would you like to apply OS customization settings? So you want to click on edit settings and go through the configuration in there. Specifically, make sure you do your locale and time zone, and you can set up Wi-Fi and such also. So once you have the settings set up, you can click yes. It says all data will be erased. Do you want to continue? I'll say yes. And now it will download and write the Raspberry Pi OS to the card. Okay, it finished. I'll hit continue and I can remove the micro SD card from my computer and we'll head over to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'll take the micro SD card, I'll have it placed label up and press it into the back of the Raspberry Pi in the micro SD card slot and I'll plug it back in or turn the power back on and it should boot up now. Now I've connected it to both monitors, so we're doing dual monitor. Okay, so you can see that cycled a few times as it was starting up. So it was running an initial configuration on it, which including expanding the SD card to fill the whole drive, and now we're booted up ready to go. So it just so happens the menu is on this screen, but it could easily be on this one if you had your HDMI cables reversed. So I'll go over here and I'll click on a web browser. And we have Chromium, and I can drag this between the two monitors. Now, if I want to change the orientation of these, I can go up to the Raspberry Pi icon in the upper left. And I know it may be hard to see here, so that's why I'm describing it. And I'll go to Preferences and Screen Configuration. And we'll have the two monitors here so we can rearrange them like I can have them top to bottom or side to side. So you can change the orientation there. So I'm going to unplug one of the monitors for now. And when you first get your Raspberry Pi, you'll likely have updates. So if we go in the upper right hand corner, there'll be an icon that says show updates or install updates. So we can show updates and here we can hit install. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's something you'll probably want to do. So let's do some testing of this. Let's test the Wi-Fi first. So I'm currently connected to five gigahertz Wi-Fi. I'll open up a web browser and I have a speed test on my network. So I'm going to open that up. So this is not measuring my internet speed. This is actually measuring the speed of the network interface. So I'll hit start here. So I got a download speed of 32 megabits per second and upload of 30 megabits per second. Now these aren't super fast speeds, but that is plenty fast to stream HD video and surf the web and do basic computing tasks. Now there are many factors that can determine what you'll get on a benchmark like this. Now this has gigabit ethernet, so I'm going to plug into that. So it switched pretty quickly. I'll refresh my page and I'll rerun my test. So here we're getting much faster speeds. So when you're doing a speed test like this, you wouldn't expect to get exactly one gigabit. There's overhead and other things in the system, but this is comparable to what you would get on any PC with gigabit ethernet. So I'll close this and I'm going to stick in a flash drive and that's in the USB 3.0 port. It's asking me what I want to do. I'll say open in file manager. Now I have 4K video on here, so I'm going to find that. Now this is a 1080p display, so it will downscale this. Okay, so now we're playing the video.
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. There might be little jitters here and there, and there might be ways to optimize the video playback on this. But I think that's working pretty good. Now I wasn't getting any sound out of the monitor. That might be because I plugged in two monitors and it may have been sending sound to the first original monitor. Of course, we can also open photos and such with this. So once you have this set up, you can use it just like any other computer. You can surf the web. You could download software like LibreOffice and open up Office documents. Since this has eight gig of RAM, you're going to be able to do better multitasking or open up larger programs. I think that was one of the things that hindered the earlier generations of the Raspberry Pi, but having that eight gig of RAM makes us so much more capable. So that's the Vemico Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit. I think this is a great way to get started in Raspberry Pi, or even if you're experienced with Raspberry Pi, to get up and running. This came with a really nice power supply and nice case, heat sink and fan, so you don't have to source all of those things separately. It all comes in one box and it's very easy to put together. And the Raspberry Pi Imager software is very easy to use to get this up and running. Now, if you want to experiment with your Raspberry Pi, I would recommend getting a couple micro SD cards and you can put different systems on it. So you can maybe put Raspberry Pi OS on one and then maybe play around with some other development software images on some other micro SD cards. And you can just swap those out. You want to shut it down between swapping and you can use them almost like cartridges in a video game system. So I just wanted to make this video to give a general overview of this. Now I will be making more videos showcasing this, and you can find my playlist below where I'll post those videos. And if there's anything you'd like to see, drop a comment below and maybe I can cover it. So if you're looking for an easy to use Raspberry Pi starter kit, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. But thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.